12 months of success, a story for British filmmakers of mounting popularity and achievement. Tops where Herbert Wilcox, producer-director of the Anna Eagle michael Wilding team, with a record-breaking film, Piccadilly Incident. That was at the Daily Mail Film Festival. Next all-star appearance was the Daily Express Film Ball. At this get-together, you could look in on Googie Withers and Griffith Jones. Also sitting out, Dolores, Annie Get Your Gun Gray and Michael Wilding. In the summer, the Sunday Pictorial Film Garden Party helped you to meet Richard Attenborough, fresh from Brighton Rock, and there were associated British stars Muriel Pavlo, and with her, Derek Farr. Also in the party, Joan Dowling. And Beatrice Campbell. Just to prove how keen the fans were to meet the stars, this is the way the party ended. From America, the giant Queen liners brought their quota of Hollywood personalities to Southampton. Barbara Stanick and husband Robert Taylor led the way. It was a gala year for shipboard interviewers. Barbara, we've all been told this is the second honeymoon for your birth. What do you say about it? Well, it uh, really is the first. We, did. we didn't have one at all, you know. We were working when we were married and didn't get away. And then uh, we wanted to come to England in 1939 on a honeymoon, but the war stopped us and Bob went in the Navy and that was the end of that. Old-timers Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy proved they still had the answers and the well-timed gags. Uh, anything special you want to do over here, Oliver? Nothing but uh, try and make the people happy and will you keep quiet a minute? <laughs> and uh, have a good time and have everyone else have a good time. I'm talking to the gentleman. Will you keep quiet just a moment? And then I think that uh, after a couple of weeks we might... What is it? You're standing on my foot. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> May West was there with the inch-long lashes and her famous hip appeal. May West, I want to ask you one thing. What is your greatest ambition? My greatest ambition? Well, if you come up and see me sometime, I'll let you know. Well, let's not waste any time. Let's go. <laughs> the Goldwyn girls, with the blessing of Sam himself, also took a fashionable look at Britain, and Britain took a look at them. Wallace Beardy, disguised as himself for once, went the way of all travellers through the customs. Jackie Coogan, Chaplin star of The Kid, now grown up, joined forces with Pathé's British boy star Dave and his dog Dusty. Britain's youth, too, looked to the future. What would it hold for Tony Wager, tip of great expectations? The son of a plumber, bright lights have left Tony quite unspoiled. He's still just one of the family. Eighteen-year-old Gene Simmons rocketed starwards after a brilliant 12 months of picture-making. There was Rex Jr., son of the Harrisons. Rex himself and wife Lily Palmer were filmed in an off-duty moment. Phyllis Calvert took a break from the studio to give daughter Anne a reading lesson. On the set, John Mills has kept up a starring record already established. Away from it, he's back to the role of father with Bunchy.
At home with wife Pamela Colino, James Mason settles for cats and his favorite hobby, sketching. For American stars, it was not all glamour. There was the great film pro. The famous names of the screen did a spectacular walk to the courtroom, and many had quite a lot to say when they got there. Inside the court, a Congress committee investigated charges of alleged communist influence in Hollywood. Chairman Parnell Thomas said, Investigating alleged communist influence and infiltration in the moving picture industry must not be considered or interpreted as an attack on the industry itself. Hardest hitter at the Washington hearings was veteran Adolf Manjou. The United States should be outlawed by the Congress of the United States. It is not a political party. It's a conspiracy to take over our government by force, which would enslave the American people as the Soviet government, 14 members of the Politburo, hold the Russian people in abject slavery. But Britain gave visitors from Hollywood an event they could not get at home, a pre-command performance party. Robert Montgomery was holding the stage, and with him was Loretta Young. Doing the talking was Bob Hope. Uh, pardon? To bring Bing with you. Crosby's too old for this type of work. You know that. <laughs> Coming over, he just ran out of adrenaline, but he'll be back soon, believe me. Uh, we're very pleased I'm on the air. <laughs> uh, are we rolling? Yeah. Let me know. Who tells me? Okay. 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 Now? Thank you very much. I'm very, very thrilled to be here for this uh, wonderful show, ladies and gentlemen. I consider it a grand privilege to be here for the command performance. And uh, Churchill heard that I was coming, and he's trying to blame it on the Labor Party. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, Patricia? I'm fine, Bob. Did you meet my mother, Alexis Steele <laughs> Smith? <there? laughs> Not as yet, my goodness. Isn't that a grandmother to have, huh? The king and queen met all the stars after the show, and Princess Margaret showed all the eagerness of a film enthusiast. Mixing informally with the stars, the queen spoke with Vivian Lee, there with husband Sir Lawrence Olivier. And Anne Todd. party broke up, the stars relaxed, the show was over. And there was a final pinch of snuff for John Mills. A year of great achievement for British films, the stars and the people who make them. From Britain will come new records, new reputations, new and better films.